All right, our next speaker, I'm uh, really interested in hearing this one. He is uh, Gustav, the modern nomad. He's giving a, a, a talk entitled Modern Nomadic Living. Gustav is a Swedish man who has uh, gone from investment bank employee in London to world traveler. His talk is about this alternative lifestyle. Let's give it up for Gustav. I can never get it right. Why, thank you. All right, so, um, like the introduction said, I'm a 31-year-old Swedish guy who sort of gone from doing an investment bank, a default kind of life, um, working, living in one place, and then kind of had a rethink about the whole thing. But before I start the real presentation, I want to start with um, a couple of questions uh, to get some some participation in here. So I want everyone who is currently enjoying their burn to raise their hand. Good, that was, that was just a testing question. I assume everyone does. Whoever didn't raise their hand, probably asleep. All right, a real question. Who here considers Black Rock City their home? All right, keep your hand up if you consider it to be your only home right now. No other home at all. All right, we have two other nomads, and uh, one over there, kind of half waving, maybe she's interested. Anyway, so, for me, this truly is the only place that I currently live. Uh, I've got all my things here, there's no other place. And uh, the way I arrived to being in this position, in this, in this life state of mine of being a nomad, is that I was doing a default life in London, working, doing what everyone does by default. You know, we are supposed, um, raised, to live a life where we go to school and we go and have a job and then we do the job and then we stay and get married. And if you're in Sweden, you're supposed to get a Volvo and uh, a white picket fence. And I know that you have the white picket fences here in st the States as well. Anyway, I was doing all of that and I did it for five years. And then I had a bit of a think. I, I pictured myself, I sort of added a time element of the previous speaker, and I thought, what if I do this for another five years? Then what? And I could see a promotion, and I could see a bigger paycheck, and what I couldn't see was any real personal growth. Nothing really was going to change for me, and I, I have a, a phobia. I get scared. If things start to stagnate, I start to shiver. So I saw stagnation. Other people love stagnation, they love the security of it, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I had to think, and I thought, this isn't the life for me. And I started thinking, what other life could I imagine? And I gave myself, one day, I locked myself in a room and refused to talk to anyone. I turned off Facebook, turned off the computer, unplugged everything, locked myself into my room, and I thought long and hard, if I give myself the freedom to think and imagine another life, what would I want? And the answer that came to me was the nomadic life, a life that is designed to fight stagnation. Every, there's no way you can really stagnate if you keep moving, if you keep being exposed to new cultures, to new people, to new work, to new everything. Stagnation seemed to be a long way away. I like that. Right. Okay, he's not screaming at me. Excellent. So, the first thing that came through my mind when I did, had that epiphany I want a nomadic life was, I can't do it. Uh-uh, you can't. This world is not designed for us to live without a fixed home. We, we can't. We, and I believed that for a, an hour, but I, I had promised myself to give myself the freedom to imagine things. And so I did. So I said, can I really not do this? And I thought about the money situation, for example. Well, how am I going to earn money? And here, this is, the, this is the most common question I get from everyone. So I'm going to preempt that question because I'm going to be asked it. What do I do about money? Well, there's two sides to the equation of money. One is earn more and the other one is spend less. And uh, we can all spend less. Uh, I've stopped going to the cinema, stopped going to restaurants, I stopped doing. The only thing expensive I do is uh, Burning Man and to be honest, it's just worth it. All right. And then I also work in IT so I can work online. And a lot of people today can make a living as long as they have an internet connection. And other people work uh, at bars, they do all kinds of things. So that's about the money. How about the sustainability of it? You know, what's, 
Am I doing this as a gap year? Am I planning to do this for a year or two years until the money runs out? No. I picture this as being a indefinite life. Nothing lasts forever. I hope I will last forever, but I know that one day I will either die or decide that I want to do something else. But when it comes to sustainability, there's two factors. The easy one to realize is the money situation. I've already dealt with that. The other factor, which is really important when it comes to sustainability, to being able to do this for as long as you want, is that you slow down. I don't live out of a backpack all the time. I don't move every week. I live maybe everything from one month to six months in a place. I stay as long as I want, really. Or until the visa runs out, in the case of the States. Right, so that's sustainability. So we've dealt with the location independence. You know, I, I don't have a home anymore. We dealt with the sustainability of it. You know, can I do this for as long as I want to do it? And I think it, it's true. And there's one other component uh, which goes into the nomadic lifestyle, and it's, ah, yes, I love big words. And here's, here comes the biggest word that I know, eudaimonia. Ooh, eudaimonia, you should see the spelling, it's even freakier. All right, what is eudaimonia? Eudaimonia comes from Greek, um, Greek uh, uh, philosophy. And the, the Greeks thought a lot about what is the good life. It's basically what they were all obsessed by. And eudaimonia is a term that is so well defined that it means pretty much nothing. It means the good life. It is the thing that we strive towards, not because we want to use it as a means for, to get something else. It's the ultimate thing that we want. It's what it means to live a good life. Now, no one agrees on what eudaimonia contains. You know, some people say you achieve eudaimonia through working hard like a good little Lutheran. Other people say you should go out and be a complete um, hedonist. Other people say that you should follow uh, some kind of codex, whatever it might be. For me, the nomadic lifestyle, I hope, is my path to eudaimonia. This is not for everyone. Absolutely not. There are so many people who thrive on the security of having a, f a fixed place to call home and there are others and I think that there are more people out there who would thrive on the kind of uh, potential that is inherent in a mon modern nomadic lifestyle but who just never thinks about the idea who never gets the inspiration never sits down and thinks about it never accepts that we can shape our lives a lot more than we want than we think so what I try to do with my talks and my when I pre present to you, it's not to tell you, you know, go and live a nomadic life, go you know, sell everything you own and just head out there. No, I, what I want to do is inspire people to think, am I living a life by default? Have I just slid into this kind of life without really deciding to live the way I live? And if you do sit down and you think really hard about how you want to live, consider a nomadic lifestyle. All right. Um, I'm going to keep the talk presentation part of this short because quite often people have really good questions and I'd like to skip on to the question part. So um, I really hope that you will ask questions and, uh, and I'll open the floor for that. Okay, really, really good question here, and, and probably the second question I always get asked. So, what about relationships? All right, I'm uh, this butterfly going from place to place. How do I deal with relations and relationships? Now, there are many different kinds of relationships. There's the relationships you have with your friends from at the home that you left. Strange thing is, it divides them. Half of the friends that you used to have, or at least that I used to have, just vanish. They're gone. It's really heartbreaking to see them just disappear. And then half of them stay in touch and you know we have modern technology to stay in touch and I am also free to return whenever I want. 
Uh, then there's the relationship with the people that you meet, you know, friends that you make. Again, about half of them, you know, you know, as soon as you leave their hometown, you walk out of their life, they vanish. And then there are also those who get really inspired and want to stay in touch. When it comes to the romantic relationships, it's interesting. <laughs> in a way, um, because people know that I only stay for a while, I found that you make friends quicker and more intensely, and that is also true for your romantic relationships. People know that if they want something from you, if they want to share something with you, if they want to share an experience with you, you better do it now. So you know you don't mess about and waste time. Another thing is that you're kind of safe. They can do and tell you all kinds of things because they know that you're leaving. Okay, I, I, I write a blog, but I try to be respectful of the people I meet. Um, so I'm very safe. So people uh, open up and share very intensely with me as well. Um, but then there is also the sad moment of saying goodbye. It's sad, but you also, it's you're in control of when you leave. And you're, in, and you're always going towards something that's exciting. So the goodbyes aren't as bad. They're still bad, but they're not as bad as people imagine. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Um, Thanks. Um, you brought up eudaimonia, um, the Greek idea of the, the happy life, the fulfilled life. Um, the Greeks, although they differed a lot about what they thought you know, would bring it, there was a general consensus that it had to do with character and a general consensus that it had to do with being a social creature. So I'm wondering, is there anything possibly lost on giving up uh, the idea of a stable social fabric? Because um, I think the Greeks would have thought so, and since you bring up their ideal, I thought it was fair enough to throw that out there. Yeah, the Greeks would hate me. Um, yeah, they, they were very much uh, focused on the city because all of the philosophers were uh, citizens and, and were, lived in cities and they had this amazing idea that cities is the only place where the good life can be held. Um, so you know, they would hate me for sure. I, um, however, there are things lost. Like I said, there is um, uh, those long lasting deep relationships. <sighs> yeah, they're lost in a way. Uh, you can always come back. I have uh, people that I love to return to, um, but, but I try to focus on what I gain <laughs> uh, as well. But yeah, absolutely. Um, the thing is, if you try it, if you if you want to try the nomadic lifestyle, you can always stop, and that's the important thing to 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 memorize. I was terrified of giving up my job uh, because I thought that. If I take this step and I cross this threshold, you know, the world behind me will just burn and I can never return there. And, you know, all the bridges will burn as soon as I step over them. And that's, you know what, that's not quite true. You know, we could always go back uh, and, and rebuild it, uh, that stable life. We can. Okay, uh, another question. Yes. Um, All right, very practical question here. Healthcare, I know that this is a hot topic in the US. Um, the way that it, it uh, works for me, I'm a Swedish citizen. If um, I get hurt, the Swedish government will take care of me, and then I buy an extra um, traveling insurance so that if I break a leg here in the US, climbing, I don't know, Thunderdome, um, then the insurance company is gonna ship me back, or they're gonna pay for the expenses here in the US, and they're gonna ship me back to Sweden, and then they, the Swedish um, uh, public picks up the bill from there on. So um, there, there are definitely enough ways to um, to sort out those practicalities. So far, <laughs> exactly. So far, I haven't come across any practical problem that I have not been able to solve. We have time for one more. Am I a big believer of living one day at a time? That is a really short horizon. <laughs> this idea that, you know, live this day as if it's your last. Well, good Lord, the things I would do if this was my last day. Like, I would not have a single dime left after that day. Um, now, I try to think about what's coming up as well. But I don't make more plans than... I don't make plans that I can't change. I put it like that. 
I have an idea of where I might want to go after the States. Um, but if something else comes up, I don't marry myself to my plans. I can change. If I, I might, I might fall desperately in love with you, and I just realize that you know you and I, we really should be heading off to Colombia and sort of start a farm there or something. I don't know. Uh, it's unlikely, um, but uh, it could happen. You really, yeah, right. um, Just don't get too married to your plans. And I was married to my default life for a long time, longer than I really should have. All right, let's give it up for Gustav. Thanks a lot, Gustav. I have um, one more thing I forgot to say. I, I, I write about the experience of transforming my life into nom the modern nomad and about my journey and, and life philosophy at large. It's at www.themodernnomad.com. I know that memory here at Burning Man is short, so if you want to you know, come up to me and I'll write it down and I've got cards and stuff. So, thank you.